Hello, everybody, and welcome again to ChessLecture.com. This is International Master David Vigorito. And today I'm going to look at uh, another game that uh, Magnus Carlsen won in the Kings Tournament uh, a couple weeks ago um, with the Black Pieces. And, you know, the first lecture I did here, I talked, um, this was Miss Piano against Carlsen. I talked a bit about how the, how the landscape has changed a bit because you, you see more players trying to win with Black, which has led to a greater diversity of openings. We're seeing more um, more Sicilians and Indian defenses and such rather than, than just classical like E4, E5, and D4, D5, and Queens Indians and stuff like that. So Carlson managed to beat Nispiano in a Sicilian Dragon, and in this game he uh, beat uh, Ruslan Ponomaryov in a Kings Indian. This was a little, little shakier than the other game, but it still showed... Um, kind of the fighting qualities of, of the player in the opening. So the game started d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, e4, d6, and f3. Um, most games that we see nowadays in the Kings Center are in the classical, like knight f3, castles, bishop e2, e5, with white playing either castles, you know, which is the main line, or, you know, a lot of games with bishop e3, especially at high level, the Gligerich system. The um, the Samish is not seen so much nowadays. Um, after after castles, then bishop to e3 is the main line. And since the gambit c5 became um, very popular and, you know, it was determined that this is a pretty sound gambit like this ending... Queen takes d8, rook takes d8, bishop takes c5, knight c6. Uh, black success in this line has led to fewer games in the Samish. And it's been a little of everything. Like the less, There were less games in the King's Indian after Kasparov stopped playing. Um, and so less overall games in the King's Indian, less games in the Samish because of this. But now maybe we'll start seeing uh, you know, more Samish games because the King's Indian has made a bit of a comeback and you know, Panamaria playing the Samish in a couple games in this tournament. Uh, although he did, he managed to lose both games. He probably was better in both games out of the opening. So uh, that's the reason the Samish has not played so much. There's other lines that Black can play. Black can play e5, kind of a classical variation, and also a very interesting line, the piano variation, which uh, which I cover in a book that will come out next year, um, Attacking Chess, the King's Indian, be out from every man at the end of the year. Um, the piano is a very interesting system. Black plays knight c6 with the idea a6, rook b8, which kind of gets ready for white to castle long in some positions by creating counterplay. It's a very kind of flexible and interesting system. But what... Uh, Panamariev did here, he didn't play the main line. He said he played knight g to e2. And this move not only, you know, doesn't even pretend to prevent c5 by covering the c5 square, but it encourages it. Uh, Carlson plays knight bd7 first, but they can transpose um, within a few moves. We basically get a position that could arise after c5. Now bishop to e3, c5. I should also mention that against bishop to e3, knight bd7 is sometimes played, but here white also has the option of playing knight to h3 with the idea c5, d5, knight e5, knight f2. And this knight finds a very happy square on f2 where it covers g4 in case white wants to play e4, I'm sorry, f4, and also the e4 square. Whereas in most of the lines, like what we see, this knight ends up um, being a little funnier to develop. So knight g e2, knight bd7, bishop e3, c5, d5, knight e5. And this is the structure where this knight now has to find a different place. Sometimes it goes to c1, which is a little more passive, but it can help white play on the queen side. Sometimes white will even play like a4 and then knight to a2, and this knight can help support a b4 break. But more often it goes to g3, as it does here. Um, one difference here compared to normal lines where white plays bishop to e3 and queen to d2 very early, which is very common in the Samish, is here white is delaying queen d2. And we'll see there's a specific reason for that. 
black here plays h5. It would be norm more normal probably to play e6, just heading for like a Benoni. Bishop e2, ed, cd, like a6, a4, bishop to d7, and, you know, then white will castle. And then there's the possibility of like a b5 pawn sacrifice here too. You know, or maybe rook b8. And, you know, this is an interesting strategic battle. Um, as long as black can, you know, achieve b5 and maintain this knight on e5, you know, he should be okay. Here he seems just in time, like, for example, if h3, with the idea of trapping this knight with f4, because it no longer has any squares, black is in time to play b5 in order to meet f4 with knight c4 with counterplay. Even here, then, it will depend on, you know, an exchange like this. We could also exchange a pawns, which would make some sense. You know, and then here it just depends if e5 or f5 is strong. So those are typical ideas both sides will be thinking about. Now what Carlson does instead is he plays this very early h5. So he wants to pester this knight on g3. I think this is probably more effective if white is played queen b2. But bishop b2, h4, knight f1, now e6. And now knight d2. So this is a, one of white's points in delaying queen d2 is now this knight gets to this good square. And it's almost like a classical setup for white as if he had played knight to f3 and knight to d2. But instead of getting to d2 in just two moves, the knight has, you know, gone to e2, to g3, to f1, to d2. So it's taken some time, but on the other hand, white has kind of reached like an ideal setup um, playing knight d2, having developed the bishop already on e3. And black's use of these tempi have been to push his h-pawn, which is double-edged. The pawn um, could be a disruptive force around white's king side, but the pawn could also end up being weak. So e takes d5, c takes d5, and now the knight has a possibility of going to c4. So it's a good square. Bishop to d7 castles, and now b5. And this this is interesting. Um, I think that this pawn sacrifice is maybe uh, a bit dubious here. Um, black could also play it in a different form, like a6, a4, now b5, ab, ab, rook takes a8, queen takes, Bishop takes b5, bishop takes, knight takes. A lot of times in this kind of position, like let's say white's queen was on d2, the knight c4 for black would be available, but here that's not the case. And after queen a6, knight c3, rook b8, queen c2, white protects his extra pawn. It's still not so easy um, to capitalize on this extra pawn because black kind of has like a, like a Benko gambit type position with this open b-file and this knight has some pressure on the light squares but um, whether it's full compensation is, is hard to say and Carlson instead playing b5 right away kind of gives white um, an additional resource because so now he plays knight takes b5 instead bishop takes b5 bishop takes Rook to b8, and then white has this move a4. And if black plays a6, it's not protected, so bishop takes a6, rook takes b2, and now uh, now knight c4 maybe is not so clear. Knight takes c4, bishop takes, and then h3 is kind of annoying. Um, at least gives black some counterplay here because either he has to you know, allow the possibility of a rook to g2 or do gh and mess up his pawn structure. Also here, you know, white is up two pawns, so it's really, you know, it's still not clear if it's enough compensation, but maybe something like queen d7 with the idea of queen takes h3 should give black, you know, reasonable play. Uh, instead of knight c4, maybe white should just do rook b1 and try to trade off this rook when, um, you know, white has two bishops and the a pawn is potentially very strong. So Carlson instead plays knight to h5. 
And Ponomarvi plays quite well now to show that Carlson's play is probably a bit dubious. F4, length D7, and now Queen G4, interesting move. I've never actually seen this idea in any kind of Benoni where white actually is attacking a knight on d7 and threatening to take it. Um, another possibility would just play like a consolidating move like rook b1. You know, then, you know, maybe b3, knight c4 are ideas. So that, that's a, a possible place where white can improve. Although what he did still seems uh, good enough. Queen to g4. And now Carlson does something interesting. He plays a6. The thing is, if he plays like a knight to f6, either one, then queen takes h4, and, you know, black uh, will be down two pawns. So instead he plays a6. Interesting move, and probably a good practical decision. And what Carlson does now is he keeps forcing white to make choices, and this is this is difficult in chess when, you're, when you have an advantage. Um, it's usually a good idea for... You know, when, you, when you're in a position like this for black, like, if you're worse, keep giving your opponent choices because it's hard to keep making the correct decisions. And here, um, Ponomarev took on a6. Another possibility would have been to just take on d7. And the point is that after knight f6, queen takes h4. Um, you know, if queen takes d7, then maybe even f5 and white starts getting uh, dangerous play on the king side. You know, and then knight takes d7. Um, white maybe can even trade queens. <clears throat> He's going to lose the b-pawn, but he'll still be a pawn up because black's h-pawn has disappeared. So I'm sure here Carlson is hoping, like, you know, that the, the h-pawn itself won't matter too much. And if he gets in rook takes b2, like his past c-pawn should give him um, enough counterplay. I'm sure the computers will favor white here because they like this extra h-pawn, but uh, still not so easy to play this kind of position with white. So Panamari made a different decision. He took on a6, and rook takes b2, and rook a b1. And this looks pretty strong uh, as well. This is similar to an idea I mentioned before, playing rook b1. And here, um, you know, white is just opening, hoping that his bishops and uh, past a-pawn will carry the day. So Carlson, he makes a, a probably a good practical decision. He sacrifices the exchange now. Rook takes d2. Bishop takes d2. Bishop to d4. So here white has to make a choice. Of course, king h1 is the natural move. But then he's got to maybe watch out for some ideas, like with knight g3 check. And if the h-file opens, maybe, you know, king g7 and rook h8. You know, some mating ideas. After a long thought... Ponomari played rook to f2, which, of course, in hindsight is very easy to point out as a mistake. Um, after king h1, it seems that black's tricks are not sufficient. So we'll start with, like, knight d to f6. The idea is if queen takes h4, then knight takes e4, and this, this counterplay based on knight f2, as well as, like, knight g3 tricks. Um, so queen f3, probably best move. And now a couple moves uh, for black. He could do knight e4 or knight g3. So let's look knight g3 first. hg, hg, and now bishop to e1 to get rid of this pawn. Knight takes e4. I get queen h4 check, but just bishop takes g3. Knight takes, queen takes, king to g7. Big threat rook h8, but rook f2 now, and you know, white's up a whole rook, so he can he can afford to give back some material. Um, and this really, you know, if, assuming black takes this rook at some point, white would still be a piece up. So that doesn't really seem to quite work. Um, the alternative would be to kind of play a tricky move or to play knight takes e4, queen takes, and then knight takes knight to g3 check, h g f g threatening queen. To h4, but there's a resource for white here, f5, and the queen covers h4. And if king g7, then uh, f6 kind of distracts um, this bishop from control of the diagonal. If the bishop takes, white can even uh, play like bishop to e3. And if queen takes, which looks clever, because if rook takes, then rook h8 leads to mate, 
And there's this cute move, bishop to h6 check, which uh, closes the h file, essentially, with tempo. If king takes or king moves, whatever, then rook takes f6, next move, and white will uh, have decisive material advantage. So it seems like king h1 probably um, would give white a big advantage. But it's not so easy to calculate it all over the board. And instead, Panamari played rook f2. But this is just the opportunity that Carlson needs to get back into the game. Bishop takes f2. King takes. Knight d to f6, hitting the e-pawn and the queen. Queen to f3. And now clever move queen e8. And I think this is what Panamari have missed. They probably thought, well, he's got two bishops against two knights and still has an extra pawn. The things were still good. But now the queen attacks both e4 and a4. And this might seem like an odd tactic, but, you know, this kind of move, in a way, it's uh, kind of typical in, in certain King's Indian-type positions. And now, Panamarev, I think he kind of panics and he plays e5. It seems that maybe the best was to at least keep a trump in the a-pawn and do bishop e5, knight e4, which looks very strong. But after this bold move, uh, king to e3, matters are uh, not completely clear. Uh, you know, if knight takes d2, just king takes d2, white is still in the game. Uh, and, you know, knight takes d2, if bishop takes e8, then knight takes f3, so just king takes d2. And he can't do any discovery like knight c3 because the queen is attacked. So that, even though it looks better for black, probably it's a better try, because what he did ends up just um, being bad for white. e5, just queen takes a4, hitting the bishop. And now e takes f6. One point is if bishop to b5, the knight e4 check, king e1, wherever the king goes, he can take on d2, because it hits the queen on f3. So like knight takes d2, and now if, now if king takes just queen d4 check, black has a strong attack. And if bishop takes a4, knight takes f3, gf, knight takes f4, it ends up being quite good for black. Because if he d, rook d8, and one of the d-pawns is falling. You know, he could do d7 or rook to b6, but like d7, just knight takes f6. And this pawn's not so dangerous. The king can come over here, the knight can come back to f6. And black will end up, up at least uh, a pawn in the ending. So instead he took on f6, but uh, he's probably hoping to get some mating ideas in here to maybe have some distraction. But after queen takes a6, black is quite a bit better because his, his king is actually safer than white's um, because his pieces are better. Like this, this pawn here, in a way it shields the black king a little bit, but... Not only that, all these pawns are pretty weak. F6, D5, even F4 is somewhat weak. Um, Black's queen is very strong on this diagonal, and his rook is ready like to go to E8, um, where it will bother white. Uh, really, you know, Black's pawns help control the dark squares, and white has, uh, I'm sorry, Black has light square control too with his pieces. So um, white has a lot of trouble resisting here. He played bishop to c3 to protect the pawn. And now queen c8. Maybe queen c4 is even a better move. Because um, there's like some tricks here. Like if f5, then knight takes f6. And the point is that if, if bishop takes f6, then queen c2 check. Um, it picks up the rook and white, white doesn't have enough play. This rook will very quickly come into the attack as well. So maybe queen c4 is even more accurate. Instead, white played, um, I'm sorry, black played queen to c8, and then king g1. Maybe the best try here was to play f5 now and just go into an ending like queen f5, queen f5, gf, and rook to b6. Maybe this was a better try. Like if rook d8, then king f3. And it's not so easy um, for black to make progress. White can also play like bishop to e1 next to target this pawn. And, you know, his rook is active and black's is passive. So that was probably the best try for white. Instead, he plays king g1. And then after queen f5, um, 
things are a lot easier for black because there's, there's no resource pushing this up pawn and black is ready to start picking off these pawns. So rook to f1 to protect f4, rook e8. Now this rook can even like come into e4. Bishop a1, rook a8, queen e3, king h7. Carlson just starts maneuvering for a while here. Bishop to b2, rook b8, bishop c1, rook b1. Well, now that his rook is activated, it's very hard for white to resist. And this d-pawn will drop off sometime. Queen e8, queen takes d5, which protects... Uh, F7, F5, kind of desperate, but what else to do? GF, Queen E3, finally making some threats, but Queen D4. And even with the, the ugly pawns, the ending is winning for black. Queen takes D4, CD. It's two pawns up, even though they're all doubled. Bishop G5, Rook takes F1, King takes H3. Can't protect that pawn, but he really devalues white's pawns. GH. King to g6, bishop h4, and now he's in no hurry to take on f6, and so he kind of uh, activates his pieces. Knight h3, bishop g3, king g5. A nice move, holding on to the d6 pawn. The king ending is is lost because, like, bishop f4, king f4, even though, like, like in a way, these pawns don't count. Um, it's well known, like, two pawns like this can actually protect each other these pawns on uh, f5 and uh, d4. It's very hard to uh, attack these pawns. That's that's maybe for another day, but an, an ending with, with split pawns like that, uh, you can't really win the pawns so easily, whereas black could just come over and take these h pawns. So bishop f2... Knight to e6, protecting that. King e2, f4, f6 pawn won't go anywhere. King f3, d3, he can't attack the pawn now. h4 check, king f5, he doesn't want to allow the king into e4 or g4. Bishop b6, knight c5, h5, d2, king e2. And now knight e4 protecting the pawn. And now there's not really any defense to like f3 and f2, so white resigned. Even if he, you know, just play some pass move, then f3, king d1, f2. And, of course, king e2, he can just uh, queen his pawns. So uh, white had to resign. So this is a sharp game, a little, uh, not, not a clean kill, um, by any means, but very aggressive play by Carlson, which was eventually rewarded. Could have gone the other way, but um, still a very nice game. Um, and Carlson actually managed to win another game with Black, which maybe we'll take a look at next time. So hope you enjoyed this uh, Black Magic from Magnus Carlson, and we'll see you again on ChessLecture.com. This is Grandmaster Damien Lemos here for OnlineChessLessons.net. First of all, I hope you enjoyed um, this video. If you would like to receive more free chess videos from us, you can just click the subscribe button below. I would also highly recommend signing up for my free mail course, The 10 Grandmaster Secrets to Dominate Chess. During this exclusive course from OnlineChessLessons.net, I'll share with you my own Grandmaster shortcuts to effective attacking, defending and growth hacks to improving your chess without um, complicated books or memorization. So sign up by clicking the sidebar on the right and I know you won't be disappointed. Once more this is Damien uh, for OnlineChessLessons.net and I'll see you um, in my videos. Thank you.